Hello, I'm at Super Judge and I'm so blessed. Praise God. I love it when I when I you know stand here to bring God's truth to you. You know why? Because the anointing of God's Spirit is supplied. And if you are a true minister of God, you always want to live in that anointing. Praise God. You always want to stay there. Because it's sweet, it's beautiful. And guess what? It is for you. Praise God. So I know today, God is going to lift every burden in your life. Yokes are going to be destroyed in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we call for that daily breath? Say this with me. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in good measure. Press down, shake it together, running over. Right now. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it's coming. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. Praise God. Now we're talking about the purpose of the law and commandments. The purpose of law. And why does God give laws? Why do God, does God give commandments? And our team scripture is in Psalm 78 and verse 5. He says, For he established his testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Now, you see it here. The reason he appointed the law is so that the fathers will make them known. Make what known? The laws made known to the children. Why does God want the children to know? You see, it is because of the testimony. It is because of the testimony. The moment God begins to bless you, He looks, He is looking at eternity. I shared that with you a few days ago. He is looking at eternity. Now, to keep that blessing working, he sets up laws to guide it. Now, I, I shared with you yesterday about Abraham and how the law of Titan came about. It was actually a law. It was a law. God commanded Abraham to tithe. Oh, yeah. It wasn't something Abraham figured out himself. It wasn't something Abraham just cooked up and said, oh, since Abraham could. No, no, no. It was his meeting with Melchizedek which was a manifestation of God that produced. Now remember, Melchizedek was actually the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And the work of the Holy Spirit, Jesus told this, us this day later, but not because Jesus said it, that was now added to his work. From, from the onset, his job is to guide into all truth. So God spoke about blessing Abraham and God began to do the work of blessing Abraham. Abraham began to see manifestation of the blessing. Now it is the job of the Spirit of God to say, Hey, Abraham, this is how you would walk. And that's how laws begin to come into play. This is how you would walk. And if you walk like this, then you see this blessing is going to be sustained. Now you find God bringing the children out of Egypt. And you saw God do diverse kinds of miracles in Egypt. And even when they left Egypt, he parted the Red Sea. Now all those things he was doing was to establish a testimony in them. That's all he was doing. Meaning, hey guys, I'm with you. If you follow me, Ah, these are the things you're going to enjoy because I'm with you, praise God. Yeah, God, God showed them his power, his graciousness, his goodness. He showed them these things. They were hungry. He gave them food that they didn't know about. David said they ate angels' food. I think it's in Psalm 78. He said they ate angels' food. Now, he did all that. And then he led them to the mountain. And when he got up, up the mountain, God said, Hey guys, before we go forward, I need to tell you guys some things. He said, Okay, what? Well, got out to the mountain. I want to speak with you. You know the story. They couldn't handle it. God said, Okay, Moses, you come up. I'll tell you what you go tell them. And then he gave them the commandments. What was the purpose of that commandment? To keep them. Now, he's already with them. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't misunderstand this part now. He don't use 
the laws to attract God. So God was already in the camp. Now the law that God gave to them were laws that will, if they keep, will keep them in place where he will continue to be in the camp. So it's like you become a friend with someone and, and you like this person and you are open-hearted to this person. You are ready to do anything for this person. And then you now say to the person, like, hey, you know, I like you a lot. Say, yeah, I, I notice. And, and really, I, I like to do business with you. I like to work with you. I like to be friends with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. But you know what? There is something I don't like. What's that? I don't like lies. Now, what are you doing in that relationship? You have already established a testimony. You've already established a testimony of goodness, of graciousness. See? And then the next thing you now say, I don't like this. Thou shalt not tell lies. Now, that's actually what you're saying. You're like, hmm. Okay. Now, what are you saying to that person? That's a command now. You see, because it, it just has to do with that relationship. So it's a command. It's not a law, it's a command. So, as long as you don't tell a lie, we will continue this war. The day you tell a lie, I'm out. See, because you offend me. So I'm out. So remember, God established the testimony first. Then he brings the law. He brings the command. Are you getting what I'm saying? That this is how these things work. So when God gave the children of Israel the commandments, he wasn't just giving them to restrict them like some people think. No. And, and God does the same thing till this day. There is no one who really works with God that don't receive laws from the mouth of God. If you don't, then sorry, your life, you're not going to go far in life. If you don't have laws that guide you from the mouth of God, I'm telling you, whatever you're doing will not go beyond you. Now, you see, many a times, I, I will never forget one day, many years ago, see, a friend of mine had come to see me. Now, I have seen God's covenant of blessing. I've seen God's covenant of protection in my life. Remember a few, days, a few days ago, I told you, think about yourself. What can you point out to say that, you know what? See, God is with me. That's your testimony. So, I remember many years ago, a friend of mine had come to see me. So, I was traveling. So, I escorted out to the uh, bus park. And we got there. And she boarded the vehicle, paid the fare. And just... Before they left, or I think I was about leaving or something. So I said, oh, let's pray. So I took her hands. And as I opened my mouth to pray, I knew utterance just came. You know, I mean, if you know what I'm talking about, you will understand. So I, I began to speak words, certain specific words. And when I was done, you know how you just you finish praying just that? You know, just, just go, you're fine, your journey is safe. So I was going, and then I was like, Lord, that was a good prayer, because I didn't think it up. And I heard the Lord say to me, anytime you are traveling, or anytime you are praying over someone who's on a journey, pray that prayer. Or pray with those words. All right. Yes, sir. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. That was many years ago. Now, what's that? Now, I told you already, God has shown me grace where, where protection is concerned. He's protected me. Ah. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, he's done so. Now, he introduced a command. See, now it's a command to me. Now, whenever I'm traveling, I remember to pray that prayer. Whenever I'm praying for someone who's on a journey by road, by air, by sea, 
I pray that prayer. And, and here, here is the thing. Here is the thing. Now, as long as you pray that prayer, now that's to me. Now, I can pray for someone else. But I, I don't know except uh, the, 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 the grace of extension, you know, like God's not respect our offense. If he does it for one, he, he can do it for another. So someone else can hear that prayer and say, oh, I'll, I'll start praying the same prayer too. Now, it, it would work. But then it, it will work until the Lord introduce you to your own. See, that's how these things work. Because the Lord has not made it a law yet. He say everybody must pray like this. No, that's my command. When I'm traveling, when I'm praying for someone who's traveling, that's my command. You get what I'm saying? Now, why did he bring that command? He brought in that command to keep the covenant of protection where Johnny in his concert. You get what I'm saying? Now, another instance, I was fellowshipping with the Lord and the Lord was teaching me some things. Now, you see that teaching he was teaching me, he was establishing his testimony. See, he was teaching me how to dwell in him. He was teaching me that. Then, when he, he was done, he gave me a command. And then he says, this is the reason every day you must break bread. And when you break bread, you must declare these words over your life. Now, guess what? I can tell you many things like that. See, as I was telling you earlier, as a child of God, there are laws you must have in your life. There are commands that the Lord has given to you that you must keep. So I look at your life, I look at the things you do, that's a proof that God is in you and God is with you. Because if you just live your life so freely, I mean, just do anything you want to do, when you want to do it. No laws, no commands in your personal life. I question if God is truly working with you. See, so now, <clears throat> he commanded me and he says, begin to break bread on a daily basis. Said, yes, sir. So we do that as, as a family. We break bread every day. Praise God. Why? That's God's command to us. Well, now listen. Now, <clears throat> I started it as, an, as, as, as a single person. Then I got married. My wife joined me in it. And then now we have children and we, we do it as a family now. And then now it's our turn to now do what? Teach our children. Now you see, it has become a law. The law of breaking of bread. And this is my own household. Are you get what I'm saying? So I teach them. Now, it's rooted in a command that Jesus gave. That as often as you do this, you remember me. So Jesus gave that command. Now, in that command, you, anybody can take that. I've shared my own testimony. So anybody can take that and begin to obey that. Now, in obeying that as often, you can do morning and evening. That's your choice. But then why you are doing that is because there is a covenant of life that exists that God has shown as a testimony for you. God has established that testimony of life in Jesus. So Jesus said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Are, are you getting that? You have no life in you. So God established the covenant of life in Jesus. And then he appointed a law. So when Jesus took that bread before the disciples and gave them to him and said, take it, this is my body. And then he commanded them to do this in remembrance of him. What was he telling them to do? He was telling them, a, giving them a law. He appointed a law for them to keep the covenant of life. Are you getting this thing? As long as you keep those laws. But remember, keeping the law in itself without understanding the testimony that produced that law might not do much. That law, keeping that law may end one day. See, 
We keep the law because we remember the testimony. Now that's the point you need to understand. And then secondly, the reason you keep the law, for example, you know, we, we break bread with our children every day. We break bread with our children every day. And guess what? A day is going to come when, now we, we, we teach them, but we don't take this for granted. That a day is going to come where they would question, why do we do this every day? Why do we have to do this every day? And guess what? And that is an opportunity to remind them of the testimony that God has established in our lives. You see that now? Praise God. Our time is up. I'll see you tomorrow. Listen, go out today and shine. And let the blessing of the Lord be established in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.